Hi Skinner Kindergartners, beginning violinists. I'm here talking to you from my house where I will be spending a little bit more time the next couple weeks and you will kind of be part of my house with me. We'll be practicing together still. I want to start by just going over a lot of things that we've talked about in class that I want you to be able to share with your parents and your family and help kind of teach them about violin to help all of us get on the same page. The very first part of playing violin is getting your violin out of the case. Yeah. I'm here with my violin case. Of course my violin case looks a little bit different than yours, but in general you should always have the pocket of the violin on top, the smaller end of the violin over here, the bigger end of the violin to your right. You should have the handle facing you, and yeah, if you have a pocket, the pocket's going to be on top. Make sure that the zippers are all the way on the back of the case when you're opening it, and for me, I undo my latches, and then you open it up. There's the violin, and so then you'll undo this Velcro, and your violin is wick. You can say, wake up, good morning. It's time to get played. I can't wait to play you. Do you have a name for your violin yet? Has anyone named their violins yet? Maybe that's something that you can comment and share with us if you came up with a name for your violin. You don't have to. It's just a fun little thing. And getting your bow out. Your bow should just stay the same amount of tight it is. You don't ever have to turn the screw on the end of the bow. Your bow should show a little bit of a downward curve right in the middle. That's just a little extra info for you. Why don't we start today by making some really good bow holds. Everybody remember about your family going to the pool all together. I want you to tell the person watching this video with you which part of the family this finger is. Which finger is the baby in the family. It's the pinky. He's the littlest one. He can't go in the pool. Why can't the pinky go in the pool? Because he's a baby and he doesn't know how to swim yet, so we have to keep him on top. Now, which part of the family is this finger, your pointer finger? Who remembers? The pointer finger is your mama finger. She's hanging out right by the kids. She's got just her feet in the pool, and that means that we just have this little part of our pointer finger hanging over the stick of the bow. Now we have two fingers in the middle that look very similar. Who are these fingers? These are your big brother and sister, and they're both all the way in the pool. Our thumb's on the bottom. He's not really part of the family, but maybe you could say that he's a shark because he's got this bent thumb, kind of looks like a shark fin. Your thumb should be touching on the tip of the thumb, on the metal. We see a lot of this. This is not a bent thumb, right, my friends? I'm trying to show you the best angle. This thumb is very straight, and you can tell because the tip of the thumb is poking out. So if I look at your bow hole and it's like this, I know that your hand is already sore and a little stretched out because that tip of the thumb's sticking out. So a bent thumb, a round pinky should look like this. What do we call this when our fingers are super round? We call it our telescope hand, so you can look through your telescope. That means all of your fingers are nice and round, balanced and relaxed. If you're having trouble keeping your pinky on top, I would suggest making sure that your pinky is at the back of part of the bow. If your pinky's on the front part of the bow, he's not going to be able to keep that balance. So he has to kind of go back here and make sure that he can hold on and stay in the pool, right? If he's standing right on the edge of the pool um, deck, I guess, then it's he might slip and fall in, so you want to put him a little bit farther away from the pool so that he doesn't accidentally fall in, and then the brother and sister are over here all the way in the pool. Give him some space. Great. Okay, let's do a couple bow holds together. If you have a dice at home, you should definitely use that for practicing. And maybe that can be a homework for everyone this week is to find a dice at home. You might not have one as big as me. You can find one from a board game. You can make one yourself out of paper. And we're just going to roll that dice. Here we go. This is how many bow holds we're going to do. <gasps> it rolled and it landed on the best number. Mine has a little kitty face. Which number is this? How many bow holds are we going to do? Two bow holds, says the magical kitty. So get your very best bow hold. Who's going to be the first one? 
I bet Olivia was very fast to get her bull hold. I bet Simon was super fast. I bet all of you were really, really fast. I bet Beckett has a really nice bent thumb right now on his bull hold. I bet that Layla has a really round pinky staying on the top. Let's put our bull holds down. And I want you to show me your hands and maybe make some moose antlers. I'm having a hard time giving myself the right angle. <laughs> make some moose antlers and get your hands free and then go back and we're going to make whew, one more bull hold. Here we go. Ready to set go. Oh my gosh, you guys were so fast. Evan and Ethan got their bull holds up in like two seconds. That was very quick. I bet that Soraya has her mama finger just with the feet in the pool. I bet Soraya is not making too much space between her pointer finger and her pinky. She has them pretty close by. I don't want to see anybody. If the baby's all the way over here, how is anybody supposed to be able to keep an eye on him? And how is the mama finger supposed to keep the eye on the kids? if she's so far away. So make sure none of your fingers are too far away from each other. Those were two really awesome bow holds. Let's talk, oh, and of course, very p important part of the bow. Let's just go over the names really quick. Here is the, what part of the bow is this? This is the frog. What part of the bow is this? Here is the, the tip of the bow. Here is the, Stick of the bow. Here is the. <gasps> Don't touch the hair! Why can't we touch the bow hair? Can you tell the person here with why we can't touch the bow hair? There's two reasons. One of the reasons is because we don't want to get it dirty with all of the gross stuff on our fingers from when we were playing outside or playing with our toys earlier or whatever we were doing or from our snack. We don't want to get that dirty stuff from our fingers on the bow hair. And two, we don't want to accidentally break the bow hair. It's very fragile and it gets dirty really easily. When it gets dirty, it doesn't work anymore. Who has had a bow so far this year that stopped working because it got dirty? Or maybe Taha can tell us about some kids from last year whose bows got dirty and they weren't working anymore. They would come up to me and say, Miss Mallory, my bow's not making any sound. So if you're at home, there's two reasons not to touch the hair, and if you're at home and the hair is not working, it's either because it's dirty and you need a new bow, or because it needs some rosin. Raise your hand if you rosin your bow today so far. I haven't rosined my bow today, so maybe we can talk about that a little bit too. This is a really awesome way for us to be able to talk about all of the specific things about learning violin, and for me to be able to tell your parents everything about violin that's really important. So my rosin looks a little bit different than your rosin. Maybe next time I can show you a demo on your own rosin, but with any kind of rosin, which is made from, who knows what rosin's made from? It's made from tree sap, kind of like maple syrup. You gotta take the cover off, boom, here's the rosin. My rosin looks a little bit different than yours. Yours has a wood block on the bottom. Mine has a little bit of plastic on the bottom, but this part, you can tell what the rosin cake looks like because it's kind of shiny. It looks kind of like a piece of candy. Don't eat it though. It's not for eating. It's for your bow to eat. So. A really helpful thing with putting on rosin, put your thumb right over that metal part where we always do. You don't have to keep it bent right now. This is just to make sure that your rosin doesn't hit the end of the bow and make it chip. If the rosin hits this sharp, not sharp metal edge, but a hard metal edge, if it hits that, it can get chipped and then it can cause it to break more easily. So protect your rosin by putting your squishy finger over that hard metal edge and we're just going to start at the end. We're going to scrub it just a little bit the most you play mostly just between your stickers on your bow so I want you to really focus your rosin application on that middle half of your bow maybe even closer to the tip like where I'm going right now between the middle and almost the tip and then maybe a little on the tip too and then end it with just two general sweeps across the bow so we can smooth everything out. That was such a good rosin. You can even practice having a good bow hold while you're rosining. We should have done that. Why didn't I think of that? Next time you're rosining your bow, make your best bow hold and then maybe do a little Mississippi stop stop Mississippi stop stop all the way down your bow. That's a fun way to do it. The scrubbing, make sure that you actually get some rosin on your bow. The running it over at the end, make sure that there's no weird extra sticky parts on your bow. Our bows are ready to go. Let's, my bow does not sit on my case very well, so I want you to just set your bow on your case. You don't have to lock it in. Um, I'm just going to do it with you so we're all doing the same thing. 
You don't have to lock it in, just set it in there. Get your violin out. It's time to be awake. You gave it a little bit extra time to get awake. Let's go over the parts of the violin super fast. We haven't done this in a long time at school, so it might be a fun way to get a little bit of review done today. What part of the violin is this? Does anyone know? I bet Olivia knows. It's the chin rest. What part of the violin is this? Who knows? I bet Josephine knows. It's the bridge. What are these called? The F holes. You can say hello and you can clean them out a little bit if you need to. Sometimes it makes a fun sound. These are the strings. Hello strings, you're awake now. This is the scroll. You can tell because it's kind of swirly like a cinnamon roll or a squirrel tail. This is the scroll, not the squirrel, but the scroll. And the pegs. Make sure that we don't ever touch the pegs. The pegs are for tuning, and the fine tuners down here are also for tuning. Um, if you need your violin tune, I think I'm gonna upload a different video on how to tune your violin at home with your parents' help. Um, never ever touch the pegs or the fine tuners unless you and your parents are working together to tune your violin. Okay, let's see who can stand in rest position the fastest. I'm gonna kneel so that you can still see me in the computer screen, but you are gonna stand up. And like we've done in class a lot of times before, when I'm kneeling and you're standing, we're kind of at the same level. So you stand, I kneel. Ready, set, go. Who's gonna get there the fastest? Oh my gosh, you guys are so much faster than me. Here's rest position. I'm going to be the opposite of you when I'm standing and doing this. And so when I go out, we're gonna kind of go in opposite directions. I'm gonna try to give you the best angle. Okay, thumb on the thumb spot, let's test that. How many times should we tap our thumb on the thumb spot? How many do you think? Pick a number one through five and you tap your thumb on the thumb spot that many times. I'm gonna do three. One, two, three. And your rest of your hands holding onto the shoulder of the violin. Your bow arm, oh man, I saw my reflection in that window behind me, it scared me. Your bow arm is going to cover over, I like to think that your bow arm is going over the chin rest, kind of like how your jaw will later. We want to make sure that we're not covering up the bridge, right? So this is called rest position, it's up against our side, right where our body kind of goes in a little bit, and maybe we can sing our song. Rest position, feet in line, scroll out front, that's mighty fine. Check your bridge cause it should be peeking out at you and me. Now it's time to take a bow. High toes, high toes, high toes now. What are we going to do now? Oh, I remember now we're supposed to go out. Being careful not to hit anything next to you, right? We always have to look before we go out. We can't go out looking somewhere else like I just did, looking at the camera. You got to go out and look there. Make sure you're not hitting your right on anything. Now we're going to go upside down, so you're going to go away from the computer, flipping your scroll behind you so that you can put the sponge on your head. Oh my gosh, I don't have my sponge on yet. Miss Mallory, you jumped a little too quickly for yourself. Okay, you already had your sponge on your violin. Maybe we'll do another video on how to put your sponge on. And you're going to make sure that your violin is sitting up on top of your shoulder. A lot of times I see kids putting their violins down here. We call that the violin beard because it's hanging off of you. If your violin's out front on your chest, there's nothing to help hold it up. So make sure that you're touching it on top of your shoulder and your chin rest should be coming down right above where your shoulder is, maybe above your collarbone if, if you know where that is. This bone right here, your violin kind of sits like on a little shelf right there. And let's do a 10 second violin statue. Violin statues, when we don't hold on, we just hold it securely with our shoulder and our chin. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Take your hand, go back onto the thumb spot. Get your bow hand, we're going to get our bows out of the case. Let's see who gets their bow hold the fastest. I know, a bunch of you are way faster than me. I was so slow. Let's check those bow holds. Always do a bow hold check before you play. Bent thumb in the pool. Mom fingers just her feet. Pinky's on the tip of the finger. And we have round fingers. This looks awesome, Miss Mallory. You've been doing your bow hold for many years. I bet some of you have just as good a bow hold as me, and you've only been playing violin for not even a year. That's pretty cool. Okay, we're up in playing position. We're going to send our hand down the elevator so you can go boop, all the way to the end of the fingerboard. Really quick, important message. I want you to make sure, do you see my mouse hole? 
right down here. I just put my thumb in the mouse hole. This is the hole between your violin and the bottom of your hand. I just stuck my finger through so you can see. We call that a mouse hole because our violin should not be hanging out. I call this the valley. Your violin is not hanging out in the valley because that limits how you can move your fingers. Like who remembers the day when I drew X's on your hands? You had one X here, your finger ends and your knuckle begins, and that's kind of where your violin's gonna sit on top of, and then your thumb's gonna hold on to the other side, wherever it's comfy. For me, it's comfy to hold it on the pad of the finger, as opposed to everything else about violin's always on the tip of the finger, and then you have that little mouse hole. So maybe you can use your computer to find the mouse hole, or have your parents help you, and make sure that it's there. We have a straight wrist on this hand, all at the end of the fingerboard, so that when you put your first finger down on the tape, it's right there on top of the tape. It's not too far past the tape, so we're all the way at the end. Great, bow hold check. Your violin's on your shoulder, you have a straight wrist. We're gonna play all of our rhythms on E string and A string. Here we go. Let's start with Mississippi Stop Stop. I'm gonna play E string and then A string, and then I'm gonna give you two beats to get ready to play yours. But maybe you should just be standing and holding that statue ready to go. When I'm playing, you're still as a statue. Feel free to sing along with me. I'm gonna try to take it slow the first time so everybody can play along. So first one's Mississippi Stop Stop. Ready? My turn. Your turn. Ready? Go. E E E E E E A A A A A A. That was an awesome job. I love the way that you guys were using your elbow right to raise your bow from the E string to the A string. The second rhythm that we have for Twinkle is ice cream sh cone. I'll play first and then you'll play. Your turn, ready, play. Ice cream, sh, cone, ice cream, sh, cone. Who did up bow when they went on the A string? I'm gonna play that for you one more time so we can make sure everybody is going up bow like this, whoop, where the frog and the fingers are going up on the A string. That's called alternating bows. So we always start with down bow and then do an up bow after that. That's gonna be our rule for a very long time for the next few songs. Let's do that ice cream one more time. I'll play first. Shh. Shh. Your turn. Ready, go. Down, up, shh. Down, up, down, shh, up. If you need to work a little bit more on ice cream shish cone, go ahead and pause the video and take some time to do that. Take an extra couple of seconds to go from the E string to the A string. And I'm going to show you how to do that, and then you can pause and work on that if you need to. Sounds like this. Last time, slow down with the extra. If you ever need to take extra time to work on something, do it. Down, up, shh, down. Then you raise your elbow to go to the A string. And then up bow is to your left, where your hand and your tip of your bow are going a little bit higher up in the air. If you need to work on that more, pause and do that five times or roll your dice. Now we're going to go on to the next rhythm, which is, who knows, it's the one that goes down first. I mean, they all go down first, but the name, the word that we say first is down. I'm sure all of you guessed it already. It's down, pony, up, pony. Let's start on the E string. Ready, listen first. Maybe you can sing along. Here we go. Down, pony, up, pony. And then A string. Down, pony, up, pony. I bet Naomi was singing along to that one really well. Naomi is such a good singer. Raise your hand if you remember Flowernella, her song that she made up at school. <laughs> Maybe that Naomi can upload a video of her playing her Flowernella song for us so we can still hear it even when we're stuck at home. That would be so awesome, Naomi. Another thing you guys can do is upload pictures of your cards. A lot of you, like Beckett and Naomi and other kids, made cards at home to practice with. Maybe you can upload pictures and videos of those for us to copy while we're stuck at home working on fun stuff like violin. Let's do that one one more time. I'll go first. And actually, I think it's your turn to play. Why don't you go ahead and do down, pony, up, pony on E string. We'll take one second to get over the A string. 
Ready, your turn, time to play. Down, pony, up, pony, A string, down, pony, up, pony. Good job. Another name I have for that one is Big Little, Big Little, because we use a big bow and then little bows. Big, little, big, little, big, little, big, little. Let's try that one one more time. We're going to play together at the same time this time, and I'm going to be saying big, little. When I say big, you're doing a big bow. When I say little, you're doing little. Two smaller bows. Little. That makes sense. Let's play together. Here we go. Bow on the E string. Good bow hold. Let's play. <gasps> big, little, big, little. A string. Big, little, big, little. Who knows the next rhythm? It's one about fruits. Exactly. Strawberry, blueberry. How many notes do we play when we play strawberry, blueberry? It's six. Strawberry, blueberry. If I had another hand for you, I'd show you the six. So I showed you it on my thumb. So we have six blueberries. I cannot eat any more than six blueberries. So please don't play more than six notes. Let's start by doing strawberry, blueberry when we play, and then we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six when we play. Here we go. Ready, set, play. Strawberry, blueberry, A string. Strawberry, blueberry. Good job. We're all playing together right now. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six this time. So instead of saying strawberry, blueberry, we're going to play the same way, but we're going to say one, two, three, four, five, six. Ready, set, play. E string first. One, two, three, four, five, six. A string. One, two, three, four, five, six. That was awesome. What's our last rhythm? It's a different version of Mississippi Stop Stop. It's Mississippi is a river. You can set your bow down for one second and take your fingers and find out how big your nose is. How big is your nose? My nose is this big. And now hold it up to your bow, which is set on the ground. Find out how much bow you can use for each one of your bows when you're playing. Mississippi is a river. These bows are going to be really, really small. And let's try to keep those bows a little bit short so we can keep track of what we're doing and it doesn't sound like mushy, mushy is a river. We want to sound like Mississippi is a river. Um, I'll play first in this one and then you'll play after me. Why don't you sing along while I'm playing? E string first. Mississippi is a river, A string next. Mississippi is a river. Your turn, good bow hold. E string first. Mississippi is a string. Mississippi is a river. Let's do that one one more time, maybe a little bit faster, just for fun. Let's sing it together a little bit faster. Ready, you sing. Mississippi is a river. Mississippi is a river. Keep that tempo. We're going to play a little bit faster and we're not going to pause between the strings. Bow on the E string. Here we go. Mississippi is a river. Mississippi is a river. That was awesome. Good job, you guys. Let's take a little bit of a break right now. I want you to go into rest position. I'm going to come back up a little higher so you can see me. And if you can, make your hook finger with your bow in your bow hand while you're doing your rest position. If you can't, you can just go ahead and set your bow on your case. If it's a little bit too much for you to handle right now, I'm going to stand up so you can see me while I bow. And I'll be right back with a new video for you. Rest position, take a bow. High toes, high toes, high toes now. I'll see you in just a second. We're going to work on another new little thing.